Matif Khan, VP Solution Architecture at Viptela. Today I'll talk about what we can achieve with routing in overlay networks. Let me start by describing the topology I have on the whiteboard here. I have multiple sites. I have a site which is connected to a transport which is private uh, uh, network, private MP, uh, MPLS. Then there is a site with hybrid connectivity connecting to public internet as well as uh, private network. And then I have a site which is connected to just public network. Uh, then an overlay is orchestrated on these uh, transport networks. This overlay network is uh, shown here uh, via these uh, red dotted lines. Now here in the diagram I'm also showing a corporate uh, site uh, where there are two WAN edge devices. There are two V edge uh, network uh, devices which are connected to uh, both uh, transports. Connectivity to the corporate can be layer 3 or layer 2. Uh, you could be, uh, it's, uh, it could be um, uh, IPv4 unicast, you could have IPv4 multicast uh, enabled in this network as well. Uh, then there's a data center which is shown over here. It also has two V edges which are uh, acting as WAN edge uh, devices. They're connected to both transport networks connected to this overlay uh, network. So now let's get into what you can achieve with uh, routing in uh, such an overlay environment. Um, here, first thing you should be able to connect the site to any of the existing transports. You should be able to connect it to MPLS, you should be able to uh, connect it to internet. If there's LTE, you should be able to connect to LTE as well. It should become part of the same overlay network. Second, uh, within say a given site, you could have an existing network. You should be able to seamlessly integrate with your existing network. Uh, let's take an example of a uh, corporate uh, site over here. So if it's a L3 network, you could be running OSPF or BGP with your existing uh, network devices. Uh, if it's a L2 network, you could be connected to say L2 switches. Uh, you could have uh, IPv4 unicast, uh, you could have multicast here as well. Now the next thing is the overlay needs to become aware of all of the destinations or all of the routing uh, information that exists in all of your uh, network. And this is done dynamically uh, where your vSmart controller learns about all that information. So uh, the next uh, point to note is that the controller becomes aware of everything that exists, all the destinations, all the networks which exist in your network. And uh, based on that information, your controller can orchestrate uh, routing between uh, sites uh, uh, accordingly. Okay, now say from a given site, if it's connected to a transport, uh, it should be able to either ECMP or uh, what I mean by ECMP is equal cost multipath on different transports if it's connected to multiple transports. Uh, it should also be able to use one as a primary and the other as a backup for say certain destinations or for certain application flows or uh, uh, certain segments. So, so again, ECMP, primary backup. The third thing uh, to note here is that uh, what you can also do is weighted load balancing. So if you have uh, uh, connection into connectivity into internet transport, you have connectivity into, into say a, a private uh, transport. Based on the uh, bandwidth or the transport bandwidth, you can do unequal cost load balancing or you can, in other words, you can do weighted uh, ECMP. So another thing here which we can do is on-demand creation of VPN segments. So you can create a VPN segment, say in site 1, you create uh, a segment which is VPN 2. And now you want to extend that segment to different sites. You may not want to extend the segment to all sites. You may want to uh, uh, extend the seg segment to selective sites. So in this case, you can extend VPN 2 between say site 1 and uh, site 2. Uh, you should be able to just do it uh, from a centralized location. Uh, the other thing that you can do with VPN segmentation is you can have different topologies for different uh, uh, VPN segments. What I mean by that is let's say in VPN 1, uh, you may want uh, connectivity which is more like uh, uh, hub and spoke. Uh, in this case, your hub sites can be your corporate sites. So you can uh, take traffic from uh, say site 1 which is going to site 3 uh, via the hub site. Uh, whereas if within VPN 2, you may want like a full mesh topology where uh, there is any to any connectivity. So in this case, VPN 2 is only existing between, between site 1 and site 2. So 
connectivity between B, uh, the, the uh, between VPN 2 between site 1 and site 2 is going to be direct it won't go uh, to the hub site and say now you want to create this uh, uh, VPN 2 at a, another site you bring up uh, VPN 2 um, in this case over here uh, in site 3 let's say there's VPN 2 and now you want like a full mesh uh, topology within VPN 2 uh, between the, these three sites. So you should be able to do it by defining a simple policy at the central controller. So the controller allows you to uh, dictate uh, different topologies for different uh, VPN segments. Another thing uh, which I'll bring up is, uh, is uh, application of uh, policies uh, again at the central location. So you, you define your apply your policies at the controller where you can uh, say uh, uh, use the policies to define different topologies you can you can uh, 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 use the policies to do, do traffic engineering you can define the policies to do uh, things like service uh, chaining uh, where you can insert different services at different locations and route your traffic through the services before they get to the final destination so that's all done by applying a policy at the central location you don't need, you shouldn't need to go and you don't need to go and touch all of these edge devices uh, uh, to make that happen again centralized policies can dictate which traffic goes where uh, you can also uh, uh, from a central uh, location you should also uh, be able to uh, uh, come up with a policy where you can route a certain applications traffic along a certain path or uh, the, uh, one example could be you have a certain application traffic from uh, say site 1 within VPN 2 that needs to go through a service which could be a firewall which could be sitting in a hub site or which, which could be sitting in say a, 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 some colo so you can route that specific application traffic from within VPN 2 based on the policy through the firewall to the final destination so in summary uh, with the overlay routing what you can achieve you can uh, connect to any transport so you have complete tra uh, uh, transport uh, independence uh, uh, one key thing is that the overlay should be able to seamlessly integrate with your existing network so you should be able to dynamically learn uh, the information uh, uh, from the devices in your existing uh, network uh, third thing uh, is that uh, you should be able to come up uh, with uh, uh, VPN segments on demand. It should be as simple as like a click of a button to enable a VPN segment, extend it from one site to another or one site to multiple sites. Here in this diagram, I'm showing three sites, a corporate site and a data center. But in reality, there could be thousands of sites uh, out there uh, connected in a, in a similar uh, fashion. Uh, last but not least, uh, uh, the policies play a great role uh, here. Now you have the capability of controlling the policies from a central location. If you have thousands of uh, sites, you don't have to go to thousands of sites and configure your policies there. You should be able to come up with a policy where uh, the, the application is at the, at the central location and the, the whole network uh, or the overlay gets orchestrated based on your policy which is applied at the central location.